autistic let's face. So if you don't have to clap, that's first of all the thing. <coughs> Clapping, you can clap, but some people might find that sensorially overwhelming, so let's practice doing jazz hands applause. Three, two, one. <laughs> I can feel the musical theatre flowing from the seats, it's wonderful. Uh, so good to see you all here. Uh, Jerry is the reason that we're all here, so please give a warm jazz hands to Jerry Rothwell. Thank you, great, thanks Yorick. Yorick, I should say, uh, I think I met sort of midway of making, making the film, and, yeah. and we screened the film with the Oxford uh, Autism Experience Group at the time, Lot, part of lots of screenings around feedback from autistic people, and that's, uh, we got amazing kind of uh, that process where you tell you what the film is. Um, we'll be doing a, both be doing a Q and A afterwards, uh, so look forward to talking with you about the film. I was just going to say, as, as I think hopefully this film speaks for itself, um, but just to say a bit about the book. So the book um, that the film's based on is um, by a twelve-year-old non-speaking Japanese autistic boy, uh, written maybe ten years ago, and he wrote it by. Yeah. <laughs> you can typing onto a uh, keyboard or and you also type it straight directly into the computer. Um, and I was kind of really interested, uh, the, the book was found by my producers, who have an autistic son, who are in the, in the film. Um, I guess what struck me was the sensory world that Nasa described. But it's a book that's maybe not an obvious adaptation to make. It's 58 questions and answers with no characters, with no plot. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll make a film about Nasa. I went to Japan, uh, had an amazing two days with Nati where we talked about the project. At the end of which he said, that, that's great, I'm very excited by it, but I don't want you to film me, film my family, or have me in it. So that felt like a bit of a challenge, <laughs> and sent the film off in a very different direction, trying to make a sort of cinematic equivalent of the book. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. In this cinema, we've framed it down a little bit because of the bend on the screen and danger of losing some things. So you'll have to, I, I think you'll get used to it. Uh, but look forward to speaking later, and uh, yeah, I, think, thank you for that. I think some basic rules uh, might be in order. So like I said, this is going to be an autistic-led room. That means if you are behaving in a way that you wouldn't normally do in a cinema, like something comes over you and you need to clap, or you need to stand up in your seat, walk around, you need to make noises, you need to put something on your ears to protect your ears. There are moments in this film that are kind of overwhelming sensorially-wise. Not so much when it comes to flashing images, so don't worry too much about that. There's a little bit, I think, yeah. but nothing too painful. I have watched the film, I'm autistic myself, I've got sensory issues when it comes to light and sound. When it comes to light, it's pretty good. When it comes to sound, there may be moments where you want, might want to put your fingers in your ears, or might, wa uh, might want to put ear defenders on. All of that is okay. If you feel like you can't sit still, fine. If you feel like you need to make noises, fine. Yes, to the back. The loud sounds will not be surprises. They're not jump scares. They're built up to. Yeah, that's true. Usually, usually there's a sort of swelling scene. Yeah. yeah. So what it is is there are representations of anxiety, and so as you know yourself, when anxiety comes, it doesn't usually <coughs> come in straight. When anxiety builds, it builds slowly. So you will have moments in the film where you feel the vibration, where you feel like, okay, I kind of want to build up to this, and then protect your ears. If you want to keep on ear defenders throughout the film, also fine. Don't worry about it. We talked about not wanting to look weird in the cinema, but to be honest, being neurotypical, Jerry's the one who looks weird in the cinema right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Any questions further? Great. Enjoy. Thank you very much. See you later.